stay with me because this is the moment everything flips. When you light a match, flames appear. But the flames aren't causing the combustion. They're what combustion looks like. In the same way, perhaps the brain isn't creating consciousness. Perhaps it's what conscious activity looks like when viewed from the outside. This isn't a rejection of neuroscience. It's a reinterpretation. All the data still holds up. But instead of the brain producing your inner world, it becomes the appearance of that world when it's observed across a boundary. That's why changing the brain changes the mind. Not because the brain causes thought, but because it reflects it. Like how altering the dials on a dashboard changes the readings, but not the sky outside. You taking a pill that messes up with your conscious inner life, like an antidepressant or a psychedelic. All these material processes are the appearances of causal mental chains from mind to mind, because mind is all that exists under analytic idealism. This model explains why medical interventions work, why surgery, medication, and trauma affect perception, because these interventions are targeting the representation, not the source. But here's the trap. If we mistake the representation for the thing itself, we build our entire scientific understanding on an image, a reflection. And then we try to replicate that image in machines, in algorithms, in systems that calculate but never feel. This is why, despite all our technological advances, we're no closer to building true artificial consciousness, because we're modeling the dashboard, not the awareness behind it. And as long as we stay inside that framework, we'll keep solving surface-level problems without ever understanding what experience truly is. That's the risk of asking the wrong question and mistaking the image for the origin. Do you believe in God? Yeah, of course.